Dang. Good morning. Good morning. My name is uh, Brandon Yee. I am the youth and family minister here at Potomac Valley. And uh, I just am excited to be here for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, Christmas just happened. Everybody's just generally pretty happy after Christmas. You know, it's just it's, it, all the decorations and it's nice. And hopefully we got some nice presents. Uh, I, I got blessed personally, you know. Uh, my grandparents were kind. Uh, and so, uh, but, but I just wanted to say, you know, and, and my family is here, actually. Uh, my parents uh, are over here. Uh, they uh, go to the Northern Virginia Church of Christ about an hour north. Uh, and then he my sisters, Heather and Ashley, are here as well. Uh, and so, you know, they wanted to come visit, support their brother, and hopefully, you know, they can laugh at me later and tell me what they really thought. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome uh, that... Uh, it's, it's almost the end of the year, which is crazy. Uh, it, it felt almost like 2015 started yesterday. And now we're saying it's 2016. Uh, because at this time, it's supposed to be cold. Like, that's, that's like my gauge of when things are, you know? Like, oh, like it's cold, it must be winter or whatever. But it's like, it was 70 degrees. I was, we were at the Rockefeller Center, me and my family, and it was just 65 degrees. People were walking around with T-shirts. I'm like, this is wrong. It feels so wrong. It's got a Christmas tree up here. I'm like, is that a Christmas tree? I can't even tell. You know, it just looks like a regular tree. It's just so warm, uh, honestly. And so it's been messing me up. So I haven't really taken the time to do what the time-honored thing is of New Year's resolutions. You know, the, the, these things. You know, it's kind of just tradition. I don't know if it's just America. But, you know, we, we do this thing where we just kind of have goals. Usually goals we didn't meet the year before that we want to meet this year. And, and, and a lot of times those are just repeat things. You know, it's kind of just repeat offenders of the same thing. You know, you can have the same, it, sometimes it's something like, oh, you know, I want to be able to run a half marathon or a marathon. And that's usually a joke in most places, but for here it's real. Like people actually, people actually do those things. Um, so I couldn't make a joke about that. Uh, but you know, it's, there, there are things that we, we dream of being. Right, we, whether it's be more fit or to learn a new skill, we kind of have this idea that as the new year comes, there's kind of a renewal, that there's this time that we can go and do something new. So it, it makes sense that the way that we end off this year uh, is a scripture that really focuses on how to build for the future. You know, and uh, Jesus is uh, very clear, and, and honestly, it's, uh, it's, an, it's an awesome way that he really describes that. So let's pray. Uh, to get our minds set and ready. Uh, dear God, thank you so much for uh, this time uh, and honestly the honor that I have that to preach the word. God, I am so humbled to be able to read from your word and to, uh, and to try and find ways that we can, we can really live it out ourselves. Uh, God, for us to really push ourselves to, to being the people that you wanted us to be uh, and not uh, to settle or not to, to be what the rest of the world is and to conform, uh, but for us to really be a people on a city, on a hill, God, for us to really be lights. Uh, I love you, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. So we'll be reading from Matthew, uh, the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 7. If you haven't been here with us, we've been going through the Sermon on the Mount, uh, which is Jesus' first ever sermon, which means it's the first sermon ever, like in, in all of history. Uh, and it was an epic one. It spanned many weeks. It took us three months for us personally just to go through it. Uh, but we are now at the end. We're, we're, we're taking a landing. And he, he, Jesus uses some incre incredible uh, imagery uh, to really close us out. So it says here in chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. You know, a house is our protection, you know, it's our shelter. This is, it, it, it's almost a basic that we take for granted a lot of times. 
right? You know, we grow up moving from house to house as kids. You just expect to have a house. If you're blessed, sometimes, you know, maybe you're even going from house to house trying to, trying to find a place that's stable. But for, mo- for many of us, it's just kind of there. It, it's, it's not something we really have to think about. So this scripture, I think, loses some of its meaning in, in the times now. Because if we go back to that time, if you didn't have a house, if you didn't have a home, you were vulnerable. You, know, you weren't safe. There are wild animals everywhere. You know, there's all kinds of things going on. Weather can come and get you. If you have little children, it's, it's hard. And back then, they didn't have steel or iron or concrete or all this lasers technology that we have. Their houses were, were really just built by themselves. And so for Jesus to say that this is what they need to build on means so much because this is a basic of life, that they can't go without knowing how to build a house that will stand. You know, Jesus has just finished, um, you know, all his entire sermon and kind of collapsing it into this small analogy. Uh, But it's an epic one, and it's something we all understand. You know, we all know rain. It's been raining a lot recently. It should be snow, like I said, but it's rain. You know, it's, it's rain, it's wind, it's, it's all of these things. And we know what it's like to have a house shake. You know, to, to know what it's like to, to have a home where everything is silent and outside it could just be, just be crazy. And so this is part of why I believe that this scripture right here actually applies to us now, to, to our lives here. Because this is something that we can all connect to. Because we want to have something that will stand. You know, it's funny here because Jesus has a theme throughout the Bible uh, with the word rock. Uh, It's it's almost like a little story arc within the Bible in itself for people who like reading or screenplays, that kind of thing. It's it's not necessarily the main focus, but you see little things here and there that Jesus says throughout his life. You know, in the beginning of his life, uh, he gives the name Cephas to a regular man who is a fisherman. He just gives that name to him. He just, he essentially just met this man. The only thing that was different about him was that he said he would follow Jesus. But he gave that man the name Cephas. And he said it'd be late, later, that's important. Three years later, he gives the same man the keys to the kingdom, which is the authority to go and build the church that Jesus said, to essentially take Jesus' place in leading the people. Like, that's a big deal. And we know this man as Peter. And if you know, people who've read the Bible know Peter was not a perfect man. Uh, in fact, kind of the opposite. He made a lot of mistakes. So it doesn't make sense why he would give this man who made so many mistakes something that he really didn't deserve. And yet, if you didn't know, Cephas is a strange name. We don't, you know, I'm not planning on calling my kids Cephas if I have a kid, you know. It's like, you know, the kids would make fun of him. Um, but, you know, the, the name Cephas uh, it means rock in Aramaic. So the meaning of that is rock. And this is important because later on in, in Matthew 16, verse 18, it says that Jesus tells him that the church will be built on him, the rock. So he, Jesus is saying that he's going to build his church on this man, which is really interesting because that's not how we think, right? When we think a church, we think a huge building. We think tons of people and, you know, organs or lots of microphones and stereos and guitars. We, we, that's the image that we have. But Jesus is saying he's building the church on people. Which doesn't really make sense to us, but honestly is, is kind of incredible. Because it's saying Jesus doesn't need a certain amount of resources. He doesn't need people that are, that are capable, who have got all of these, everything figured out. He's looking for people just to follow him. And that's what the church is. That's the church he wants to build. It's not all of the extra stuff. The church he wants to build is with the people that want to follow him. You know, if you don't know already, the Potomac Valley Church here, that is what we're trying to do. You know, we are striving for that. You know, but it's a choice to build on the rock. You know, you look back and it says that there's a, people who build on the rock and people who build on the sand. The storms come to both. And so we have to choose what we will build on. You know, and that's what we're striving for, is to build something greater than us. 
We want to build something greater than everything else in the world that could wipe us away. That is what we're shooting for. That is what we're trying to build. You know, but the hard thing is to build on the rock, if we really just try and do that, it's to build on faith, right? It's to build on something that we can't see. Because even this idea, how do you build a church with people, like you can't stack people up on top of each other to make a church. You, you can't, you need buildings. You, that's the way our mind works. And so even for us to really build, we need to believe. And, and sometimes believing is hard because we don't know where it's coming from. We don't know what's happening. And for those who've been in this church, it can feel like we don't know what's happening. You know, things are moving in and out and all these people coming in and just random guy coming and preaching, you know. It's here four months ago and he's saying we, you know. It's, it's, it, it can seem like there's so much going on that we just don't understand, that we don't understand the vision of where we're going. But that's the only way that we go where God wants us to go is when we see beyond what we can see. You know, personally, I know that's hard for me. You know, I, I, I'm not a person that likes to take chances for the most part. Uh, you know, I, when I make a decision, I usually make a decision, make, like I'll, I'll come out of that situation better than when I didn't. You know, like if I'm playing a game, I'm not going to go and play basketball against Kobe Bryant because I know I'm going to lose badly. So I'm like, eh, I'm just going to pass on that. Um, but, you know, if it's like Kobe Bryant with two broken legs, maybe I'll play Kobe Bryant with two broken legs. You know, just, just, just making, making logical ways to go about it. So, so building on the rock is actually really hard for me because I don't know sometimes where God wants me to go. But, but he does say to have faith, right? And for me, this is just this really hard thing for me to understand. And it's really hard for me to commit to that. You know, it's hard for me to commit to, to building outside of what I'm comfortable with. You know, because it, it's, it's comfortable. I like being comfortable. You know, I, I don't like having to go and try new things or to learn new things or to do things that could be hard or could fail. But there's also a part of me that also wants to do something great with my life. I think everyone has that part of them, no matter how old you are. You know, my parents are here, and they're inspiring. Uh, you know, they've had kids, and they've done a lot of things before they had kids and while they had kids, and they, they still dream now, you know. When we were coming back from, uh, from Christmas, they, were, they have these dreams about doing, doing even more. You know, and some people, they just are, are done, you know. They're like, hey, you know, we had kids, and we'll just kind of do our thing. But, but I don't believe, actually, everyone feels that way because... In being here and in talking with a lot of people who people deem to be older, right, I think everyone still has that desire to do something great. It doesn't matter if you're 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 or 90. We've got 90-year-olds here. You know, like, we want to do something great. And we always feel like we have time. And that, I think, is from God. And... And we want to build something that will last. But, but we also have the part of us, too, like I said earlier, that, that is afraid, that doesn't know what to do. You know, that, that, that feels like it's too much to, to go outside of what we know. And so when I was thinking about this, I thought about this time this summer uh, with, uh, with Indicott Parks. Now, now, if you don't know who Indy Parks is, uh, he's kind of like... Uh, Indiana Jones. Like, that's the best way to describe who Indy is. Like, he just jumps off of stuff and likes to go fast all the time on everything and swimming and, uh, you know, he's a nature man, right? You know, and, and so we were hanging out over the summer and uh, we were on a lake and uh, we're just going on a boat and we, we're, we're going and, and Indy's like, hey man, we got to go explore. So I go, oh, okay, all right, you know, sure, that sounds like a good idea. I'm not Indiana Jones. That's, that's not who I am. Um, so I'm like, hey, you know, it could be great. You know, we'll just go on a boat. It'll be fun. So we're on this boat, and, and we're traveling. We're traveling for a while. It's fun. And he's like, hey, man, so I saw this really big rock earlier. Uh, let's go check it out. So I was like, okay, big rocks. Okay, you know, it's big rocks. I've seen big rocks before. Um, so, you know, we're going, and, and, and we, we find this rock. And uh, it's massive, right? This thing is huge. And, uh, and we're looking at it. And, and we both just kind of are, are sitting at it, staring at it, and we go look at each other, and we're like, we, we need to jump off of this rock. 
we, we, we need to jump off of this rock because it, it's, it's in a lake. So there's this huge lake and this rock is coming out of here and, uh, and there's just a lot of water here and we're like, man, we gotta jump off this rock. But, but we were not stupid completely. Uh, you know, we, we did have safety measures. Uh, you know, we uh, wanted to see if it was deep enough. You know, we didn't want to have to jump off and for us to hit the rocks in the underwater. You know, just simple, logical things, right? So Indiana Jones survived for a long time for a reason. Um, so, you know, same thing with Indy. Indy has survived for a long time uh, because he's naturally athletically lifted and pretty smart. So we go, and, and, and our, our safety way of figuring out if this is a good idea is we swim out to hypothetically where we would jump off to so we're eyeballing where we would jump off of into where we could jump to and then just swimming down to see if there's any rocks there. It's obviously very scientific. Um, and so we're, we're, we're swimming and, uh, and I'm like, all right, so I'll go, I'll swim down and then you swim down and if either of us touches the bottom, it's just a no-go. Like we're just not gonna do it, right? So I swim down and I'm swimming three, four lengths. It's pitch black and it's cold. Because if you know anything about lakes, it's warm up here and then it's just freezing. And so I'm already going down, and the water's cold. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be the guy that dies next to him, Indiana Jones. You know, like, Indiana Jones always survives, but there's tons of people that die around him. You know, like, I'm going to be that guy. You know, he's going to come out okay, but I, I don't know about me. So I'm going in, and, and I'm like, all right, well, it's cold, it's dark. I think I'm good. I think we're good. You know, this is about, like, four times my body length. So I go up. I'm like, yeah, man, it's good. He's like, okay, you know what, I'm, I'll check too. I said, all right, that's a good idea. So he goes down comes back up. He's like, wow, that's deep. We can't, we, either of us can't see or touch the bottom. Like, Sounds good. So we go up uh, on this rock and we're looking down and it looks like it's a solid seven, eight, maybe 10 feet, right? Off of the water. And it's, uh, that's what it looks like. I don't know if it actually is that, but when you look down, it seems like everything's tiny. Uh, and we're like, man, I don't, I don't know about this. So he's like, all right, I'm going to jump first. It's Indy, you know? Indy knew what he was doing. Uh, and so I was like, okay, sounds good to me. Um, you know, you go ahead, go ahead. I'll. And so he said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll. my job was to stay in the water, and if for some reason he didn't come up, I would look for him, right? You know, just make sure that just to drag him up off the water. That was my job, right? So, so I was like, it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah, if I don't come up in like 10 seconds, then come find me. I said, okay, all right, sounds good. Um, so he's up there, and Indy is like a, you know, he's, he's a daredevil, right? So not a lot of things scare him. But as he's standing up here, he's scared. Like, I can tell. Like, this man is, is, is nervous. Uh, and it's funny because he's like, man, I don't, I, I'm, 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 I'm scared. And if, if Indiana Jones is scared, like, you're scared, you know? Like, like what's scared for, for him is, like, extra scary for regular people, you know? <laughs> So I'm like, oh, all right, well, you're scared, okay. But he goes, right? So he goes, he jumps, and uh, he's in there for, seems like it's super short, right? He's like, oh, that's not that bad of a jump. You know, it's okay. You know, and, and he comes up, he goes in the water, and I'm like, oh, please, Lord, please, please have him come up. And he comes up, oh, okay. But at the same time, the relief happened, also the panic and fear happened, because then I knew, like, I would have to do this now after. <laughs> You know, like the moment I was like, oh, he made it out. It's like, oh, he made it out. <laughs> oh, gosh. So he goes, I go, and, 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 I'm in the, and, and he's like, all right, you got to do it. So I'm, I'm climbing up this rock, and I'm like, this is a bad idea. This is, this is a bad idea. You know, what's, what would mom say? You know, like mom would definitely say don't do it. You know, definitely. Dad would even say don't do it. You know, I was like, oh, okay, all right. So I'm looking across, and. And I'm stepping up, and I'm like, oh, oh man, you know, and you got to kind of do like a little running jump thing from it. Uh, and I was like, oh, man, and, uh, layers of complex things, you know, like Indiana Jones, it's nothing. Um, but, but I stand and say, okay, you know what, I'm just going to do it, right? So I jump, and it seems like I'm in the air for, for forever. <laughs> it's, it's like real-life slow motion, you know. I'm, I'm standing up, I'm, 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 I'm just in the air just... It's, it's like, this is what it's like to be Michael Jordan as he's going for a dunk, you know? Like, he's just in the air, just hanging. And I'm, I'm hanging, and then immediately I just hit the water. And I go down, it's dark, and, you know, and I swim up, and everything is fine. And so, of course, we then decided it wasn't anything crazy. Uh, but 
But every time that we would go, we went a couple more times after that. Every time we would go, I would stand up on the rock, I would look down, and it would still be the same fear that I had the first time that I did this. You know, I looked and I said, this is terrible. This is a horrible idea. What would mom think? What would dad think? You know, the same thoughts run through my head. I was like, if I died now, like, what a way to go, you know? Like, I didn't, didn't do enough things. I, I didn't eat enough steak, you know? I was like, ah, oh, you know? Like, it's little things in your mind of, like, you know, bucket list, you know? And, but, but it was terrifying every time I stepped over the ledge and I saw, even though I had already done it before, right? And I had done it before four times, five times, six times, seven times, and I knew it was fun. I knew it was, sa- you know, it was safe. It was great. But every time I was afraid. And it can be like that for us, too, when we try and move on faith. For us, when we step out and try and do what God tells us to do. Because it can be something as going and inviting somebody at the grocery store to church. Or telling them about Jesus. And it can feel like the most terrifying thing in the world. Or going to school or going to work and, and telling them what you did over the weekend. Not going and partying and doing all the other things, but you spent time serving the poor. Or you spent time with other disciples, followers of Jesus, trying, trying to make the world a better place. And it can be so terrifying to do those things. Even though we know it's worked before, right? For those who have been around, we know it works. When you go, sometimes people say yes, but sometimes people say no. And sometimes people are looking for churches. But it's still terrifying every single time. But this is the only way that we build on the rock, is that we have that fearless nature about us that trusts that God will take care of us. And it's not nearly as dangerous as jumping off of a rock into a lake of water that's dark. It's just simply asking people if they want to know more, praying, going and doing these things that maybe we've used to do before, but now, because times have been hard, we don't do anymore. You know, we... It's, it's been incredible to see how God has moved even here. You know, I think this church has moved in ways that it's been uncomfortable for, for about a whole year now. Does that mean, is that concurrent with how long Will is here? Yes. Yes, that is. But, but we have been uncomfortable moving in ways that we've never moved before. Because it's been moving on faith. And it's not safe. It's not easy. It's not comfortable. But that's the only way that we can get to the heights and places that God wants us to be. Otherwise, we stay where we are. We will stay with the family that we have. In fact, we'll probably lose people. But if we continue to put God first, that's the only way that we'll continue. You know, building by faith seems exponentially harder than building by sight. You know, I want to know. You know, if I'm walking on something, like, I want to know that it's real, that it's there. I'm not just going to walk on an invisible bridge. I'm not going to go and and test something out that seems like it's sketchy or built 100 years ago. And, but if that's the way that we go about it, if we go and try and do things our way and what we can see, there's only so much that we can prepare for. There's only so much that we know. There's only so many places that we can go to. And so, honestly, we've, we've taken that challenge. And there are a couple of things that we're doing, right? We believe in, in, in advancing the youth. So we've come up with this idea of the spring turnship. It's uh, Anna B coined the term spring turnship. It's spring and internship, if you don't, you know, didn't get that. Uh, but, but we believe uh, in training the youth to be great leaders spiritually wherever they are. They don't have to be in the full-time ministry capacity. It doesn't matter what but for them to be fully prepared to be great disciples everywhere they go, for them to be ready to do what they need to do. Uh, And so it's during the spring break of all the main colleges, and and we're opening up to people. But this is kind of one of the things that we're doing. And and the second thing that I wanted to bring up that I think is awesome is the thing that Will referenced is the regionalization. Because if we really truly want to serve the communities that are around us, we need to be where the people are. We need to be in our neighborhoods. We need to be in our streets. We need to be in our people's homes. We can't have this idea of letting other people do the work. This is something that we need to do and take Woodbridge, take Fredericksburg, take Stafford in ways that have never been done before. 
That's how we need to go and look after it. And not just kind of a collective, we'll just do what we need to do. Because that's easy to do and comfortable. Like, I'd rather just, eh, you know, if people come to church, they'll come to church. You know, I don't really know. God will reach out to them, I guess. I'm just going to do my thing. I'm just going to come to church and sing a little bit, maybe talk to somebody and leave and get lunch. That's easy. That's comfortable. But that's not going to get us to where God wants us to go to. That's not building on the rock. Because as we know, times have been getting really, really crazy. We've had 2015 was one of the most violent years in modern history, honestly. In, in all of these first world countries, there are shootings, there are all kinds of disasters, catastrophes. So we have to ask ourselves, are we ready for that? Will we stand when these things come to us? Because Jesus says they're coming. The winds, the rain, the floods, all of these things are coming. Will we be ready? Will we have people around us that will stand with us? Or will we have people that will run because we built a house that was not safe? That we built a house that was built on us and not on what God wanted. You know, the crazy thing is, is as we continue to build on the rock, we can also be tempted to build on the sand, right? And, and building on the sand isn't simply just, oh, we'll just, it, it's not overt. Sometimes it's just being cynical. Right? Sometimes it's being discouraging. You, know, you hear this really zealous, excited spiritual brother, and you sit there, and I've done this countless of times, you know, tons of times. And I'm like, yeah, that guy doesn't really know, though. You know, it doesn't work. Like, okay, these are great ideas, but who's going to do it? That's, this seems like a terrible idea. We're, we're barely hanging on. Why should we do more? That's building on the sand cutting people down that are trying to build on the rock because that's easier for us. And it's easier. Well, you know, if I thought about this. If I'm building on the sand versus building on the rock, you, in the sand, it's easy. You, you dig a hole, it's there. You know, it doesn't take much work. Building on a rock, that's a whole different idea. That's, that's, that's harder. That's more work. You need help, people's help. And, and if we're really going to go and go to the places God wants us to go, then that's what we need to do. And, but the, the amazing thing is, it's, it's the end of 2015. Everything is done. Every, if it, whether it was good or bad, all of this is over. And 2016 is our chance for us to go and move forward in the way that God wants us to. Because if we do, if we build God's way, let me just tell you some of the things that he promises what will be. You know, if we build on the rock, we will not be self-focused, envious, or proud. We will not be boastful, easily angered. We'll keep no record of wrongs. If we build on the rock, we will be who God always intended us to be. We will be patient. We will be kind. We will protect each other. We will trust each other. We will persevere. And most importantly, we will delight in evil and delight in the truth. Not delight in evil, sorry. And delight in the truth. Yeah. And... And these things, they won't be taken away, like money or reputation <clears throat> or, or power. These things that we put so much stock in, those things will never be taken away. And I think that's why Jesus trusted in people that were imperfect. Because he knew that they could stand when money wouldn't. It doesn't matter where the economy is. If we build on the rock, we will still be here. It doesn't matter if there's war going on outside of our doors. If we build on the rock, we will be here. That is who God intended us to be. And not people who are only here sometimes or maybe or because we should. You know, if this is your first time coming um, or first time coming in a while that you thought about God, uh, I'm really glad you came because this is who our family is. Uh, this is what we're trying to become. But by no means... Is this where we are? So don't feel like, oh, I'm an inferior person. Trust me, I'm, I'm the worst. I feel like I'm the worst of all people here. I'm naturally just so faithless. But this is where we're trying to go. This is direction we're trying to go. You know, if, if we don't feel like loving Jesus, we have people around us that will help us to love Jesus. You know, because we're not feeling fired up all the time. I'm not fired up every day. But if I'm not, I've got somebody to my left and to my right to hold me up when I'm not. That's what it means to be in a church. 
It's not to be with people that criticize or to point out all the wrong things or to tell us we're going to hell. The people that are around us encourage us daily so we do not be hardened by sins of deceitfulness. That's the kind of church that we are and that we should be. You know, if you're a member here for a long time, I think it's time to prepare for an incredible year, honestly, and to not let the previous years hold us back from really dreaming and really shooting for what we want. It, if we really believe the scriptures, God will help us build something Satan cannot touch, Satan cannot destroy. You know, parents, let this be the year that your kids remember that your family really decided to build on the rock. For them to go back in their memories in 20 years from now and to know that 2016 was the year that we changed things. And I know that this is when my parents said we need to do this God's way. Because for me personally as a kid of parents who did believe in that, I, I remember that now. And I know that, that's, that that makes a difference in people's lives. It makes a difference in the families. You know, for those closest to my heart, the young people out there, you know, shout out to all of you people uh, under, under the age of 25. Uh, you know, I think we've got to dream about what we'll do with our lives and what impact we have. It's not just for the old people who have money and jobs and stuff, but for us, we need to dream about what we want to do, who we want to become, and more importantly, who God wants us to become. You know, I want to challenge you to settle to not just do what you know, but to go and do things that you've never seen or done before, but you know have been, but you know God is pushing you to do. We all have that voice in our head that tells us we need to go and try harder to do more. That's the voice that we need to be listening to. You know, Jesus has given us instructions in building something that Satan cannot destroy. That building on the rock is something that will last for eternity. You know, for a parent, it'll be there for your kids. If you're a grandparent, it'll be there for your grandkids. If you don't have kids, it'll be there for anybody else that decides to come into this place. And that's what we want to do. We don't want to build a, a place that could go if there's a storm or if something happens. We want to build on the rock. We want to build that when the rains come, when the hard times come, because it will, that we will still be here that we will still decide to follow God. And, on, and honestly, God wants to bless us with that. God wants us to take us to places that we've never been before. It's crazy what we're doing. Like, it's actually crazy. It's not just you guys that think that. I think that's crazy too. Will's telling me all these things. I'm like, can we, is that possible? Can we do this? Like, do we have enough money for this? Like, am I going to get paid? Or it's like, am I just... Like, am I just going to live off of beans and rice? Do I have to go home? Like, but that's the only way we dream is when we go beyond and above what we think could be possible. Like, my dream is that we can't even fit here anymore. Like, you know, FCS has been great. It's been awesome. We play basketball. But my dream is that this place is, won't even be good enough in a year, that we can't meet here because there's so many people. It would break a fire code or something, you know, one of those things. Like, that's my dream, is that in a year that this place is too small, this place would hold the kids, maybe. That's my dream. You know, that all these three different regions, that, that they have amazing worship, that they have incredible times that they have together, that they have just this awesome sense of family. That's my dream. Not to have all the bells and whistles but for us to have interpersonal relationships with each other because that's what building on the rock is. It's not building on accomplishments. It's not building on what we can do or what we can't do, but it's building on each other. It's encouraging each other and helping each other grow. That's what it really means to build on the rock. So thank you for letting me preach.